Roy Lichtenstein was a pop artist who was born in the 20s and is most well known for the work he did in the 1960s. At that time, he was working in the abstract expressionist style. But his young son challenged him by pointing to a Mickey Mouse comic book and saying, I bet you can't paint as good as that, huh, Dad? He then went on to shock the world by making paintings that look like comic books and was instrumental in creating the pop art style of the 1960s by adopting techniques and the look of cartoons. One very obvious element in the look of the cartoon was the heavy black outlining along with the graphic dots that often showed shading. This painting by Lichtenstein is titled Kiss Five and was done in 1964. These dots were called Ben Day dots after a printer named Benjamin Harry Day. It's similar to pointillism and depending on the effect needed, the dots are spaced very close together for more saturated color or far apart for a pastel. For example, magenta dots would be spaced very far apart to create pale pink. Benday dots were a way to inexpensively create shading and secondary colors in comic books. To create our heavy black outlining, I've mixed some black acrylic paint with a gloss medium. And it's about a 50-50 mixture. Just gonna stir these together. I'm adding the gloss medium so that the paint becomes a resist. And it's gonna be used first with a brush for, to create the thick black outline, and then again on a texture plate to create patterning similar to what's seen in comic book images. The paper I'm using is a smooth white manga paper that makes it easy to apply the resist to, and also looks a lot like a smooth, slick comic book page. So here's a drawing that I've already added the black resist to a plain old coffee cup. So next I'm going to add some patterning. Now I'm using some palette paper, you could use newsprint, tracing paper as a mask so that I can mask off any areas of my composition that I don't want to receive the pattern. So I've just laid down the paper, traced around the area for the patterning with a pencil, and then I cut out the shape of the area that will receive the pattern. So I'm going to just brush some of the resist that I've already mixed onto a texture plate. And then I'll press it onto the paper. So I've got my patterning on the body of the cup and it has masked the other areas that I didn't want to receive it. Now instead of texture plates, you could also make dots with stamps or even just use a pencil eraser. But these rubbing plates do come in a lot of different varieties. There are sets of architecture plates which include brick or wood patterns, geometric designs, or organic designs like animal skins. I like to use the more geometric or op art designs for this project. Once all of the line work and texture work is done with the resist, you're going to let it dry completely. And now it's really easy to add concentrated pop art color using Blick liquid watercolor. The resist will resist the paint, but it also helps to contain it in the areas that you're painting. It's thick, so there's a little bit of a wall, so completely easy to add some vibrant color. When you've only just slightly dilute these watercolors, they maintain that vibrancy. If you want a lighter pastel, just add some more water. The first time Lichtenstein's new pop artwork was exhibited, it was criticized by art critics and Life magazine published an article, and it was titled, Is He the Worst Artist in the U.S.? However, the record for the highest auction price for Roy Lichtenstein work is held by the 1963 painting, Woman with a Flowered Hat, which brought $56.1 million in May of 2013. So there you have it. I hope you'll try making a Lichtenstein-inspired pop art resist. For more detailed information and a materials list, please visit dickblick.com.